Everybody, welcome on in. This is Brandon with Taylor's Fire and Smoke Cooking. This is another edition of You Can Make a Monday Motivation. I truly appreciate you guys being in. Um, today's lesson is really, really uh, exciting for me. It really, really touched me. I was studying, uh, studying the Word, and I was reading through the Book of John, and I got to chapter eleven. This is the story of Lazarus. Read this many a times. We know the story. I've heard it preached many a times. But this particular time as I was studying, God really began to speak to me in regards to this story and put some parallels in place. Um, so briefly, Lazarus was really, really close with Jesus. A lot of people like to say he was like a brother to Jesus, along with his sisters, Mary and Martha, who were all really close with Jesus. While Jesus was away uh, preaching and teaching, Lazarus had become deathly ill. So uh, Mary had sent word to Jesus to come because Lazarus was deathly ill. When Jesus had got word that Lazarus was sick, it says in the word that he stayed where he was two more days before he began to travel. But, it, he, but then he also said that Lazarus with sickness was not unto death. So even though he knew that Mary and Martha wanted him to come immediately, he stayed where he was two more days because he understood that the, the work that God had him doing was more important at that particular time. So now it says in the word, uh, as they begin to travel back to Bethany, Jesus said to his disciples who were traveling with him, let's go see about Lazarus who is sleepeth and I go that I may uh, wake him. Now this confused the disciples because they were like, well, if he's just sleep, then why are we going all the way to Bethany? You know, sleeping is good for you. So if that's all he is, is just sleep, then there's no need for us to go. So as they were asking, Jesus is just told them bluntly, Lazarus is dead. And for you all's sake, I'm glad that he is. So now they're like, okay, now you're, you're glad that he's dead for our sake. That makes no sense. But it makes plenty of sense in the grand scheme of things. Sometimes God allows things to happen so that we can see how glorious he is. We can see how magnificent he is and that we can truly trust and believe on uh, what he's able to do. We look at situations and we be like, there's no way that that's going to happen. There's no way that uh, this can turn. This There's no way that this can change. There's no way that he's going to lift, uh, raise him from the dead. But God will allow uh, things that come into our lives that seem like you can start burying it, putting dirt on it, bearing, uh, put six feet deep and he will see uh, you will see his glory. So, again, that's similar to what happened with Lazarus. He was glad that Lazarus was dead so that the disciples who still waver from time to time in their faith and belief could truly see the glory of Jesus Christ and the glory of God. It says uh, when Jesus finally arrived at Bethany, Lazarus had been in the grave four days four days now so there's no telling how long you know it took for him to get to uh bethany it says he was where he was two more days and they had to travel so he was dead in the grave four days she says when he got there mary and martha come to him and was like you know jesus they were happy to see him but at the same time they're like if you had been here our brother wouldn't have been dead so now they were you know they were upset because now i knew i knew you could have healed him i've seen you heal people from but I've never seen you resurrect anybody. And they so they didn't have enough belief. They had enough belief in Jesus to know that he could heal somebody, but they didn't know that he could raise them from the dead. So they were upset about it. You know, if you had been here, if you had been in my life, if you had come when we said to come, then our brother might still be alive. It says, then Jesus went on to tell her, thy brother shall rise again, that whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall not die. And that's key right there. It says, whosoever liveth and believeth in me. That's the key point. Sometimes we say we live, but we don't truly live. We say we would believe, but don't truly have trust. And we expect things to happen, but we don't, we don't a hundred percent vested in what God can do. We're not a hundred percent vested in God. And so the expectation is when I need something, I kind of believe when it doesn't happen right away, then I have no belief. It says, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall not die. So the word, uh, Jesus traveled, he went to the tomb. He says, roll that stone away. Mary was like, well, Jesus, you know, he's been in there four days. We're talking about, you know, in Bethany where it's piping hot outside. He's been clothed in this tomb. They didn't have the current uh, ways of embalming a body and making sure the fluids are taken out so the body doesn't decay. Four days in that heat, that body's decaying. It's stinking. It's uh, breaking down. And she's like, you know, you want us to roll this stone away? Ain't no telling what we're going to see. But Jesus already knew. Once they rolled the stone away, it says Jesus spoke with authority and said, Lazarus, come forth. 
And that's what we have to do. We have to begin to speak with authority over situations in our lives. Those things that were once buried, those plans, those dreams that we once had, uh, that we thought we were going to have and that we've, we've begun to bury, that we thought were once dead. Speak authority over those things and say, come forth. Just because Jesus didn't come when you wanted him or God didn't move when you say move, uh, move, wanted him to, that does not mean that those things are dead. They're just sleep. They're just um, uh, resting right now. And we've allowed those things to lay dormant instead of believing that God is still able to do it. Begin to speak with authority over those things. Speak with, with authority over those dreams, those prayers that you've had, that you laid at night with uh, crying out to God and he's confirmed that didn't come when you thought they were going to come. That marriage that seemed like it's on his deathbed for dear life. Begin to speak with authority over that marriage that God's going to resurrect it. Those things that this pandemic has run ravaged through and ra uh just destroyed that those things that you the dreams you had before the pandemic started the things you thought were going to happen begin to speak with authority over those things because god says come forth and uh and you will live and that's what's going to happen begin to speak with authority over those things tell those things to come forth it goes on to say once he spoke with authority the people were sitting there waiting to see what was going to happen lazarus came forth says he could barely walk because he was clothed so much with the uh the garb and the uh, the bandages and everything, the clothing that they put on him for burial, then it says, loose him and let him go. You have to begin to loose those dreams, loose those things that you've allowed the devil to, uh, to bound up, those things in your mind that you've allowed to bind up that you didn't expect to happen anymore. Loose them and let them go. God is a, a still able. He's still, if he makes a promise to you, he, does, he doesn't break promises. It's us that begins to let go of those promises and dreams. And God is speaking speaking life over the things. He's telling him to come forth. He's resurrecting those dreams that we've allowed to die, those things that we've allowed to lay dormant. Speak life over them. Speak with authority. You know, it's funny. One thing he said was Mary, was she was skeptical. and But God said one thing that really stuck out with me. He said, if you believe, you will see my glory. And that's the big thing. If you believe, you will see his glory. Do you truly believe? It's easy to say I believe and still have doubt. Belief is trusting, believing, putting things in place. It's the word says faith without works is dead. That means it. What that means is if you believe, you begin to start operating as if it's going to happen. You begin to start lining things out, knowing uh, with expectation that it's going to take place. So if you believe, you will see his glory. Believe, trust, and begin to work toward that thing. Look, guys, God is resurrecting dreams. He's resurrecting situations, he's re resurrecting marriages, he's resurrecting finances, he's resurrecting ho uh, housing issues, he's resurrecting your bank account, he's resurrecting your mind. You just have to trust and believe and, and, and keep on at it, and God's able to do it. Uh, God it really, really encouraged me. There have been things that you know I, ex I had expectations about, and I would hope that we were further along in certain situations, and God is still saying, I'm not going anywhere. Just because I didn't move when you said move doesn't mean it's not going to happen. You trust and you keep on believing and you will see my glory. Guys, I pray that this encouraged you the way it encouraged me. Uh, I hope that those dreams that you've had, those things that you've cried out to God about, that you don't don't let go. Begin to unwrap those things. Be begin to speak over those things with authority and watch how God works. Father God, I just truly thank you for this lesson on today. I thank you for it encouraging me, Lord. I pray that it encourages somebody else. There are people out there, God, who have allowed things that you told them that you were going to do to, to die, that to lay dormant, Lord God, and all they are is just sleeping right now. We pray that they begin to trust and believe in you so that you will see all the glory, God, that they will begin to speak with authority, Lord, over those situations, God, and believe that it's going to come to pass. We ask that you begin to give people uh, faith and strength in everything that they got going on, Lord. We speak over those marriages. We speak over those businesses. We speak over those finances right now. And we know that you're going to resurrect those things, God. This is just a bump in the road. But we speak and believe and we speak life over everything right now in the name of Jesus. We truly thank you, Lord. We honor you for all that you've done and all that you continue to do. In Jesus' holy and mighty name, amen. Guys, this was Brandon with uh, another edition, You Can Make a Monday Motivation. If you have a prayer request or you just need prayer, as always, you can leave it a comment down below. Put praying hands up. Just say me and I will begin to pray. Uh, you can always uh, send a message to me through my email, which is taylorsfiresmoke at yahoo.com. Or you can see it on my about section on the page. Or uh, you can reach out to me through Instagram, however you want. But we will definitely pray for you. 
uh, just keep on believing, begin to unwrap those things, pull that thing out the tomb, tell it to come forth and watch how God begins to move. Guys, I truly appreciate you guys watching. Uh, uh, definitely a blessing. God bless you. Till the next time.